Hey folks, it's that time again. We've got to the end of another year, which means we're starting a new season and that makes it the perfect time to take a look at some of our trades and see what we might want to shift, which is exactly why I have decided to do a video today on my best ETFs for 2024. It's going to be great. Let's go. Hello, hello everybody, it's Jeremy Whaley here from Trade Maestro. Hope you're doing fantastic today. And as I said in the opening, we're gonna take a look at my best ETFs for 2024. So it's a new season, whenever you're watching this, if you're watching at the end of 2023, or if you're watching this just after the new year, perfect time, perfect time to take an account of everything. And of course, exchange traded funds are one of the best tools to use for our portfolios, and especially when you're trying to manage something that historically maybe has been done by a fund manager, but you've taken control of that. And so that's what we use ETFs for. So I'm gonna talk about my best ETFs for 2024. For those of you who may be a little bit new to some of the stuff that we do and maybe aren't as familiar with the terminology, let me just kind of give you one slide on what is an ETF, what are ETFs? And an ETF is simply, that's an acronym for an exchange traded fund, ETF, exchange traded fund. What does that mean? Well, folks, it's like a mutual fund, only different. So if you're familiar with the, the, the concept of a mutual fund, which most of you are, because you know most of your retirement funds and your retirement fund managers are using mutual funds. So a mutual fund is a pooling of different stocks that you bring together into a fund, and then you pool people's money together to buy all these stocks. And then as the collective fund rises, then you make money on it. Well, an ETF is kind of like that, but the difference is you don't trade it like a mutual fund. Instead, you trade it like a stock. It trades on the exchange exactly like an individual stock. So, you know, you're used to trading an Apple or a Google or, you know, any of the 3,000 plus stocks that are out there. Well, guess what? You can also trade a fund like that. And when we do that, it's called an exchange traded fund. And guess what? It is way, way better than a mutual fund. It gets rid of a whole bunch of the bad stuff of the mutual funds. It adds a whole bunch of the great stuff that you get whenever you trade a, directly, uh, trade a stock directly. And uh, that makes this, in my opinion, the, the mutual fund of the future. I've called it that for probably 15 years. And um, the first time I called it that, it was already well established. And that was at least 12, 15 years ago. So for sure, this is the mutual fund of the future. All right. With that said, I have given you a pre-frame. If you want more uh, information about ETFs, then you can take some of my courses on ETFs and learn more about that. But what we're going to do here is I want to give you a list of my favorite and my best ETFs for 2024. So get ready to take screenshots, get ready to take pictures. And before we do this, I want to also remind you kind of my philosophy of how I trade. Um, I'm not a day trader per se. Sometimes we'll do but day trades, but that's not my preferred style of trading. Uh, everything that I'm going to share with you in terms of this list of ETFs will work great for day trading if you want to. My style of trading is more intermediate swing term, intermediate swing term. <laughs> How do you like that? Intermediate term swing trading. How's that? Intermediate swing trading. Um, which means that my typical trades are going to be anywhere from three months up to maybe six or eight months, sometimes nine months, sometimes 10 months, sometimes longer. Just depends on the swing. But um, in general, we're going to pretty much catch the intermediate uh, swing of the trade. That's the, the focus for what we're doing. Okay. So with that said as a preframe, um, let's jump in. Oh, actually one more thing I want to say before we get going. I want you to know these are not specific trade recommendations. I am not at all saying that these funds are going up. And this is a really, really important point. In fact, I should have done a slide for it, but I didn't. I am not saying these funds are going up. Here's what I'm saying. These are funds I like to trade. Now understand as a trader, we trade the upside and we trade the downside. And that just means that these are good funds to trade, okay? And they're my favorites for the upcoming season. So with that said, now you know, do, do not go out and just buy these funds directly. I mean, you can, but that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm saying put them on your watch list and then use smart trading behavior. All right, let's get into it. 
For starters, let's look at my favorite index ETFs. Now, index ETFs, these are going to be exchange traded funds that trade an index. And honestly, this list pretty much never changes, but I'm going to share it with you anyway. Uh, the benchmark is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The ETF that we trade for that is DIA, Diamonds, DIA, okay? The benchmark, the S&P 500, the one we trade for that is SPY. That's the spiders, SPY. And then for the NASDAQ, it's QQQ. Now, those are by far the most popular ETFs that I trade. SPY, SPY, is the most popular ETF traded. So it's always on my list because of the popularity for it. Um, so there you have it. But if you're looking to get exposure to the NASDAQ 100, use QQQ. If you're looking to get exposure to the Dow Jones, use DIA. If you're looking to get exposure to the S&P 500, use SPY. And if you're looking to get exposure to Russell 2000, which some of you might be, uh, use ticker symbol IWM. That is the correlating exchange traded fund. Now, Let's talk about the bottom of this list. The bottom of the list, you're going to notice there's a bunch of short funds. And as I said just a moment ago, just because something's on the list doesn't mean you need to go buy it. These short funds are designed to go up when the market goes down. So here's what happens. If the overall market takes a bearish turn and you don't want to be trading SPY, you don't want to be uh, trading the diamonds, DIA uh, or QQQ, if you don't want to be trading one of those, then how can you make money in a bear market? And the answer is this next set of funds. These are inverse funds. You buy these just like a stock. You can buy them long. You can also buy them short or sell them short, but um, it's already a short fund. It doesn't make any sense to do that. So you're going to use these this particular funds that I'm about to tell you. You're going to use them in a bear market when you're looking to make a profit while the market's going down, you're gonna use these funds, you're gonna buy them like a regular long trade, but they're gonna go up, okay? So here we go. Uh, the 2X short Dow, this is if the Dow Jones is going down and you wanna trade a bearish trade, use ticker symbol DXD, DXD. Uh, for the short S&P 500, I use SDS. For the short NASDAQ, I use QID. And for the short Russell, I use TWM. Now you will notice all of these are 2X funds, which means they're gonna move twice as fast, okay? And I do that, especially for the short trades, uh, I definitely use the 2X funds for that. Um, I like these funds. I trade out of those um, probably, well, every, every ticker on here, except for TWM, I will probably trade at least once in the next 12 to 18 months just depending on what the market's doing. But I trade these fairly often. I trade the Russell the least. Um, the Diamond Spy Qs and the related inverse funds, I trade them relatively often, okay? So there's my index list, all right? Next, let's talk about the commodities list. Now, um, I do not go through every commodity. Um, these, these funds that I'm sharing with you, these actually are the core funds that I use in some of our ETF um, bigger picture money manage management plans, uh, specifically the one that I teach my ETF uh, course that I call Raging Profits. So these are the ones that we use for the commodity rotation. And so here they are. For gold, we're going to use ticker symbol GLD. For silver, we're going to use ticker symbol SLV. For oil, I will use USO, and for natural gas, I use UNG. Now, those are the primary commodities. I do not rotate through other commodities. I, if I'm not in one of those four, then we'll just be in cash, okay? You also notice, however, two more at the bottom that are not specifically commodities, but they don't really fit somewhere else better, so I stick them in here, and that is solar and treasuries. So for solar, we use TAN, T-A-N. And for treasuries, we use TLT. Now, I will tell you that treasuries are starting to look pretty good right now at the beginning of the year. Um, they've actually given us some really good signals. The Fed has signaled that they're done raising rates, which means treasuries should have a pretty good outlook. So out of this list, that's definitely one you're going to want to keep close on your radar. Gold and silver, 
it's just the ETF versions for, for gold and silver and then oil and natural gas. Again, it's the ETF for that. So um, these are the only commodity funds that I really work with. Um, you know, from time to time, we might look at some others, but these are the ones that we consistently rotate in for our rotation, for our sectors, okay? And finally, the last section is actual sectors. And so again, part of our money management plan that we do, we rotate through five of these. Actually, excuse me. We rotate through five uh, diversifications. Three of those are gonna come from this list right here, which is our sector list. Okay, so let me give them to you right here. And they're all the X's basically. So XLC is for the communication services. XLY is consumer directory, consumer staples, XLP, energy, XLE, financials, XLF, healthcare, XLV. Industrials is XLI, materials is XLB, real estate, XLRE, technologies, XLK, and XLU for utilities. So take a screenshot of that, and then you can have that list. And like I say, these are part of the bigger picture plan, but these are the ones that we rotate through. And I've uh, been using them for a long time and really, really get great results with them. So again, I want to emphasize just because something's on the list doesn't mean you need to go buy it right now. What it is, is it's on your watch list and then based on your criteria for what you should be getting into and when you move in and out of the ones that are appropriate. So if you want to learn more about that, you want to learn more about how we use these. I actually have a three-day challenge that is free. You're welcome to go sign up for it. All you need to do is, um, well, I'll put a link below. So wherever you're watching this, if you're on YouTube or Facebook or our website or wherever, you can, um, you can just go right below or wherever and get yourself signed up for it. And um, yeah, that's how you do that. Okay. So that's the best way to do it. It's three days. It's easy. It's free. You have nothing to lose. And then you get all of the information that I'm sharing with you. Okay. You'll understand how these funds really work. Uh, next, if you have not signed up wherever you're listening right now, if you're on YouTube, Facebook, wherever, subscribe, like, follow, whatever you need to do so you can get the rest of our updates because we'll be sending more out. And of course, you always want to have access to them. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys have a great new year. Or if it's already in the new year when you're watching this, I hope you had a great new year. And I hope you have the greatest 2020 forever. All right. Until next time, happy trading. We'll talk to you soon.